Hello students, today we are going to discuss the chapter molecular basis of inheritance. Previously, we have discussed about the principles of inheritance where we studied about the inheritance patterns and the genetic basis of inheritance. Today, we are going to discuss the character, the chemical nature of the molecule responsible for inheritance. The topics that we are going to discuss today are DNA structure, packaging of DNA helix, Griff experiment, Hershey and Chase experiment. Now let us first see how the DNA was discovered. Initially it was identified by Friedrich Mister in 1869 and he called it nuclein. In 1953 Watson Crick he discovered the double helical structure of DNA with the help of the technique which is called X-ray diffraction data which was developed by Wilkins Franklin. Before we go into the detail of DNA structure, let us see where the DNA is located. The DNA is located in the cell. The cell contains the nucleus. The nucleus contains chromatin material. The chromatin material after during the cell division, it organized into chromosomes. The chromosomes contain the DNA. Now let us recall the chemical nature of DNA. As you can see in the diagram, there are three important components, the nitrogenous bases, pentose sugar and phosphate group. The nitrogenous base is attached to sugar with the help of a linkage which is called glycosidic linkage. The combination of nitrogen base to sugar forms nucleoside. The phosphate group is attached to the phi prime OH of nucleoside with the help of a linkage called phosphodiester linkage. Now let us see that how the two mononucleotides are joined together to form dinucleotide. Three prime phi prime phosphodiester linkage makes the two nucleotide joined together. There is a 5 prime free phosphate group and the backbone is made up of sugar and phosphate. Let us understand with the help of the following picture. As in the picture you can clearly see the nitrogenous base is attached to phosphate sugar. The phosphate sugar is attached to the phosphate group and there is a linkage between the 3 prime and the 5 prime between the two nucleotides. Now let us have a look on how the polynucleotide looks like. Now this is a very simple model which you can also make. which shows the clear anti-parallel character of DNA. The 5 prime to 3 prime and from 3 prime to 5 prime. Let us see how the DNA molecule looks like. It is a long polymer of deoxyribose nucleotides. Now let us see the salient features of DNA. The two polynucleotide chains, they are anti -parallel. The backbone is made up of phosphate and sugar. The anti -parallel polarity, that is, it is from 5 prime to 3 prime and from 3 prime to 5 prime. The nitrogenous bases are joined together by hydrogen bonds. That is, the A pairs with the T and G pairs with C. There is a difference in the hydrogen bonds between A, T and G, C. As you can clearly see in the picture, between A and T there is a double bond and between G and C there is a triple bond. So the following diagram shows the antiparallel features of the DNA, 5 prime to 3 prime and from 3 prime to 5 prime. Now let us study about the coiling of DNA. The coiling is stored in the right handed fashion as you can see in the picture. The pitch of the helix is 3.4 nanometer and in each turn there are 10 base pairs. So the distance between each base pair becomes 0.34 nanometer. Another very important feature is that how the stability is confirmed on the TNA. It is because of the plane of one base pair stacks over the other so that the stability is confirmed. Another important feature, let us study what is the importance of base pairing. Number one, it provides complementarity to each other. 
and second it helps the sequence of other strand that can be predicted. That means you can predict the base pairs of the other strand if you know the base pairs the base nitrogenous bases in the previous strand. As we know that C always pairs with D and A always pairs with T. So, if a one strand contains A, D, C then the other pairs because of the base pairing will be able to predict the uh, nitrogenous bases of the previous strand. Now, let us see some interesting facts about the TNA. In the bacteriophage like 5x174, it has 5386 nucleotides. And in E. coli, the DNA base pairs are 4.6 into 10 raised to the power 6. On the other hand, in human DNA, the base pairs are 3.3 into 10 raised to the power 9 base pairs. And the length of the DNA is 2.2 meter, whereas the size of the nucleus is only 10 raised to the power minus 6 meter. Now, you can imagine that why how the DNA is packaged in such a small nucleus. The size of the DNA is 2.2 meters, it has to be packed into such a small nucleus. Let us study further. So, we now deal with the topic that how DNA is packed in a cell. Here we will study separately the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, the DNA is held with proteins. As you can see in the picture, the DNA is organized into a region called nucleoid. There is no true nucleus. On the other hand, in eukaryotes, the DNA is present in a well defined nucleus. Now, if we go little detail into prokaryotic DNA packing, we see that the DNA is packed in the form of loops. So, there is so much of coiling. On the other hand, in eukaryotes, the DNA helix consists nearly 200 base pairs. And here we see the repeating unit of chromatin. So, on this picture, it looks like as boson string on the chromatin, as in the form of a necklace. Now, let us study the structure of chromatin. As we know, it is found in the nucleus. It looks like thread-colored bodies, and these chromatin only forms the chromosomes during cell division. You can see clearly in the picture the chromosome and the condensed chromosome structure where the chromatin materials which is thread like during the prophase stage how much it is condensed during the metaphase which we see uh, under the microscope during the metaphase stage as chromosomes. Now, it has been found the DNA is packed in the cell in the form of nucleosomes. As you can see in the picture the nucleosomes contains 8 protein molecules and that forms an octoma. Now, let us go detail into the structure of nucleosome. Now, what is an octoma? This is positively charged basic proteins called histones. Octoma is made up of 8 histone protein molecules. These histone protein molecules are positively charged basic proteins. The DNA is wrapped around the histone octoma. These eight protein molecules are H 2 A, H 2 B, H 3 and H 4 which are present in two copies. Now, between the two nucleosomes there is a linker DNA and that is how we get a bead on string structure. Now, there are two different regions in the chromosomes the euchromatin and the heterochromatin. Let us see what are the differences between the euchromatin and heterochromatin. In euchromatin, the chromatin material is loosely packed. It is transcriptionally active and it stains light. On the other hand, heterochromatin is the region which is tightly packed, inactive and it is darkly stained. Now, let us study the euchromatin and heterochromatin with the help of the following figure. 
the orange colored regions that indicate the heterochromatin. The centromere that joins the two arms of the chromosomes and the blue region that you see is the euchromatin. So now we have studied the detailed structure of DNA and how the DNA is organized into the chromosomes which we see during the cell division. Now a very important question is that what is the chemical nature of the DNA? We have studied the chemical nature but how it was proved that DNA is a genetic material. So now let us study certain experiment that has led to the proof that DNA is a genetic material not other macromolecules like RNA or other macromolecule like carbohydrate. So now let us study the search for genetic material. The first experiment that was performed for the search of genetic material was by Griff. In 1928, he worked on the bacteria Streptococcus pneumonia that causes pneumonia in rat. Now, while he was experimenting with this bacteria, he found a surprising change in the bacteria. These bacteria Streptococcus pneumonia, it occurs in two forms. The one is the S strain, which is called the smooth strain, and the other one is the R strain which we call the rough strain. The S strain is smooth because it has a polysaccharide capsule on the bacteria. On the other hand in the case of rough bacteria they lack this wall and therefore they appear rough. These smooth bacteria they are virulent that means they causes the disease. On the other hand the R type is non virulent. Now let us see how he performed the experiment. In the step 1, he injected the S strain into the mice. Now since the S strain was virulent, so the obvious result was the mice died. In the step 2, he injected the R strain, the leaving R cells. But since it was non-virulent, the mice live. In step 3, he injected heat killed as strain. And what he found? He found the mice live. In the step 4, he mixed the as strain heat killed with the R strain lift. And to his surprising, he found the mice died. How it happened? So he concluded that the heat kill S strain bacteria changed R strain bacteria into S strain. And there is some transforming principle that has been transferred from heat killed S strain. That means the S strain was capable to transform the R strain into S strain and that is how the mice died. But the biochemical nature was not defined by Griffith. So in the next experiment, the characterization of transforming principle was performed by three scientists, Avery, MacLeod and M. Sicarty, 1933 to 44. They purified proteins, DNA, RNA from heat killed air cells. Now to their surprise they found it is only the DNAs which inhibit the transformation. On the other hand, proteases and RNSs did not affect the transformation. So that clearly proves that DNA is a genetic material. So their observation were that S bacteria changed live R bacteria to S bacteria and so the mice died. And that was characterization by the scientists that the DNA is a genetic material. But the conclusive proof only came by the experiment performed by Alfred Harshe and Martha Chase in 1952. They worked on bacteriophages and E. coli. Now let us see how they performed the experiment. The first step of the experiment was infection. That is the bacteria were infected with the bacteriophage. Now they used two type of radioactivity. The one was 
B32 and the other was S35. After infection, the next step was blending and centrifuging. To their surprise, they found after centrifugation, the two components, the one was supernatant and the other was the pallet. They found when they used P32, they found the radioactivity in the pallet. Now, what does this pallet contain? The pallet contain the bacteria. On the other hand, they found S35 radioactivity in the supernatant. So, the following diagram clearly shows the two experiments were performed parallel in which they used P32 and the other one they used S35. The supernatant shows S35. On the other hand, the pallet shows P32. Now, a very important question here that why they use only phosphorus and sulfur? Can you guess? Yes, the DNA contains phosphorus, therefore they used for radioactive phosphorus and the protein contains sulfur, so therefore they used sulfur. Now since the supernatant contains the protein and the pellet contains the phosphorus, so what is the clear indication? Now let us see the observation of the experiment. The bacteria infected with P32 were found radioactive. So the DNA was passed from virus to bacteria. And bacteria which were infected with S35 not radioactive. So that clearly shows that protein is not passed. So now let us see the summary of the experiment. The DNA is long polymer of deoxyribonucleotide. The three components of DNA are nitrogenous base, pentose sugar, phosphate. In RNA, uracil replaces thymine. The DNA is stable due to hydrogen bonds. In eukaryotes, DNA packed into nucleosomes, transforming principle proved by a Griffith experiment and conclusive proof of DNA as genetic material by Hache and Chase. Now you can check your understanding by the following questions. The DNA is present in eukaryotes, the two options, the cytoplasm or the nucleus. The phosphate group is linked to nucleoside through bond. DNA double helical structure discovered by differentiate between euchromatin and heterochromatin. The packaging structure of DNA in eukaryote is called explain Hashe and Chase experiment. And the last question that why P32 radioactivity was found in pallet. Thank you students. Now in the next class we are going to discuss the following topics properties of genetic material, RNA world and replication of DNA.